So clearly it's my bold and daring Baylor day. I mean, you got green shoes. I love to go into restaurants when I have, when I wear this. But it's, uh, although I, I, I do. The, uh, but there's always a group of old women who see me walk in and they're just staring at my shoes as I walk by. So I always make a point to go over to the table and say, uh, these shoes are bomb, aren't they? <laughs> and I love it, you know, I don't know. Okay, bold and daring. There are two kinds of responses to an advertisement. I was sure I heard that correctly. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be going more into that. But that I can take No. No. It's Those are the principles for it. I was like, did I hear that? I would be cheating. That would be cheating. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and you don't want that to happen. I have, I have in this class actually found somebody with a page slip under their test. Oh, that was not good. So anyway, uh, there are two responses you can have. So I watch an ad and it impacts me. How do I as an advertiser want them to be impacted? So the first kind of response that people can have is the affective response, affection. It impacts me up, not effectively. It doesn't have effect on me. It has, well, it may have effect on you, but we want to have a effect on you. So affection is the feeling response. It impacts you emotionally when you see it. So when I see the ad, how does it make me feel? Do I like it? Just make me angry. So Coca-Cola did a Super Bowl commercial a few years back where they had a bunch of Christian kids who went down to Mexico to help uh, help them build something. And then they had a Coca-Cola party and a bonfire or lit a Christmas tree or something like that down there. And uh, it was panned as being the white saviors. You know, oh, we need these white people to go down and save the Indians in Mexico. And people stopped buying Coke because they were insulted for the Mexicans who were in, insulted because we need somebody to come help us. Ah, it made them mad. Well, that was not what Kobe wanted. So they did a big apology, right? How does it, does, does, does it make me? Mm, that would meet my needs. Oh, man. Right? Does, it, does it make me feel? Effective response. So for example, So for example, <laughs> come on. Hold on. Maybe that was the problem. Maybe it was looking for something. There we are. She's getting so much joy out of that little sandwich. Mm. That should be me. I hate you. Wow. Really? New Quiznos Flatbread Sammy's Soft Artisan Flatbread Sandwiches Toasted to Perfection. Big taste in a smaller size, just $2. Quiznos. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Toasty. I'm, I'm getting a little hungry. Uh, I, I feel like maybe that will satisfy what I want there. Yeah, that might be good. Wait, what's the matter with you? This was your first video game system. Remember? Your greatest holiday memory. I got to turn the sound down. If I turn it down there, the thing doesn't stall. The computer's too slow otherwise. So let me go here. Sure. 
That took a while. Okay. Wait, what's the matter with you? This was your first video game system. Remember? Your greatest holiday memory ever. Don't you remember staying up all night? Getting 148,000? I'm simply this. This is the best gift ever. Make this December the one to remember with some of the best values of the year. Now through January 5th. Feeling. I was going to show you some commercials to make you cry, but I decided not to. Starbucks double shot espresso drink. Right. Bring on the day. You feel it, right? You, you know, they, I, maybe I need one of those. Where they got that everything flat. Right? So when I bought this outfit or this vest and the shirt and the shoes, actually, I didn't buy the shoes. My son bought those for me. I was horrified. I didn't feel it. But I wear it for you guys. It's just, just too old. The, uh, and then I tried to take them off. The, <laughs> but when I bought the Baylor thing, it's like, that's because of a feeling. This is an effective purchase, right? And you're like, well, it's certainly not a cognitive purchase. Now watch it. Right. Cognitive, cognition. That is the thinking response. So you see the ad and it drives you to think. So what does the customer think about the product or the company or the commercial, uh, it, it stimulates this thinking response. So do I think about the product? Do I think about the features and functions? Do I think about my need? Do I think about, will this satisfy my need? Do I remember using it before? Do I decide to try, try the product? Do I evaluate it? Do I take time understanding what it means? Do it, does it cause me to plan when I'm going to go buy it next? Uh, does it just cause me to think? The cognitive response. So here, with this kind of decision, the advertisement is to get you to fake because Thinking is more important than feeling. Now, when some people buy a car, affection is the most important, but not for most all of us. When we go to buy a car, it's cognition. How much miles per gallon does the Toyota get versus the, the Corolla versus the Honda? Which has better resale value? Which one? Do I trust more? And I'm going to think about, now I have a Honda, so I like that. So I think about the, the last five years I've had my Honda, and it's a thinking process, right? But there are some people when they buy a car, it's a effective process, right? Truck buyers. Most people drive who, who own a truck, they have a brand. I'm a Ford man. Or I'm a, you know, they, they're brand, very brand loyal. So they wouldn't look at a Chevy. The Ford guys wouldn't look at a Chevy. And the Chevy guys wouldn't look at a Ford. That's most of them. Now, it's not everybody, but that's there's a lot of brand affection in trucks. So I've got this effective response, and I've got a cognitive response. Well, that it's because I have some purchases that are affection-based. 
And I have some decisions that some purchases that are commission based. Right? So, how many of you ladies have a certain brand of, of uh, makeup you use? Right? Why would you chose that brand? Well, yeah. Which brand purse are you going to wear? Well, maybe they're four or five. <laughs> But how many ladies have I seen, especially after they get out of college and they're at work? The brand on the purse is very, very important. It's not what the purse looks like. When I uh, went to China, I told my daughter, hey, you want me to buy you some purses? Cheap there? And she said, Dad, you would not know what purse to buy. Well, are you kidding me? I read the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> I know what's in fashion. I'm up. So when I came back, I uh, brought her all these Gucci's and those Gabbana's and you know all this stuff that I bought for five dollars and three dollars. You know that she couldn't tell any difference from the original. Yeah, cognition. Thank. What do I think of my dad buying it for me? <laughs> Don't tell. So you're me. thinking about getting Verizon TV service? You bet. Well, did you know they often use expensive cancellation fees to lock you into a long-term contract? Seriously? Man, makes me wonder what else I don't know. Do you know you're supposed to work out your lower body, too? Thank you. I'm going to save money and I don't have a contract. Thanking response. <laughs> Hi, Phil Swift here for Flex Tape, the super strong waterproof tape. That can instantly patch, bond, seal, and repair. Flex Tape is no ordinary tape. Its triple thick adhesive virtually welds itself to the surface, instantly stopping the toughest leaks. Leaky pipes can cause major damage, but Flex Tape grips on tight and bonds instantly. Plus, Flex Tape's powerful adhesive is so strong, it even works underwater. Now you can repair leaks in pools and spas without draining them. Flex Tape is perfect for marine, campers, and RVs. Flex Tape is super strong, and once it's on, it holds on tight. And for emergency auto repair, Flex Tape keeps its grip, even in the toughest conditions. Big storms can cause big damage, but Flex Tape comes super wide, so you can easily patch large holes. To show you the power of Flex Tape, I saw this boat in half and repaired it with only Flex Tape. Not only does Flex Tape's powerful adhesive hold the boat together, but it creates a super strong watertight seal. Okay, okay. So the we got it, right, right. This is, this is there. think of this, think of that, think of this, think of this, think of this. It's a thinking response, right? This one is in Portuguese. Uh, but even though you don't know the language, you'll get the message. It's a thinking response in many ways. Este é um crânio igual ao crânio de qualquer motociclista. E este é um capacete igual ao capacete de qualquer motociclista. E este é um acidente igual a qualquer acidente. Como vê, mais vale cumprir o código. Now, this is not the emotional appeal with a mother crying over the dead child who didn't wear a hat or didn't wear a motorcycle helmet. This is not uh, the person crying because they're in the hospital because they didn't wear a motorcycle helmet. This is a thinking response, right? We're trying to get you to think, oh yeah, I can see how that would work. Okay? I project myself in it. Now, sometimes, in fact, most times, uh, we put both cognition and affection into an ad, okay? 
Now the two, now even if we don't put both of them in the ad, it doesn't mean that we don't have both responses because the, the, having both of them as, a, as an impact has two results. Number one, one can lead to the other. So you, you start thinking about your, your need and you start thinking about your product and you, start, you start feeling like this would really be a good thing for me. So the cognition leads to your affection or we have an effective response and we have some loving mother who uh, kisses the child after they colored something or the grandmom sees they show and then they show the picture to the grandmom over the uh, you know the, the video on Google talk or something like that and you know the tears were up in your eyes you know and then you start thinking I wonder if my grandma could use that right so the cognitive the, the affection leads to your thinking right so that's an additive response ah but the other thing to know about the interaction between cognition and affection and affection and cognition is that they have a multiply impact because what happens is you start thinking and that leads you to feeling and then your feeling leads you to thank people some more and your thinking leads you to feel some more and you have a multiplied impact because it's this circular thing. You go back and forth from one to the other and it, it multiplies the impact of the act. Cognition and affection, critical in our advertising situations. Right? So a lot of times it's good to try to impact both the cognition and the affection, but generally we need to understand the purchase because some purchases are affection-based and some purchases are cognitive-based, right? We're good? So for example, putting them both in one. <laughs> The Lollipop Guild, and in the name of the Lollipop Guild, what happened to our voices? This is not good. Seas are over the rainbow. FedEx can get it to places other shipping companies can only imagine. Right, so here we got the we're doing the affection thing. You love Dorothy. We give you the surprise. It's funny, and then we try to get the thing. We can go places other people get. Oh, I think you can ship some to Africa. Well, our company does do that. Maybe we really ought to be using. Uh, FedEx and stuff, somebody else. Yeah, so the affection leads to cognition. And then you use them and it is suddenly you're liking it more and you remember the last time that you used them and things got there on time or, or the, of course the opposite can happen. I don't remember the last time I used FedEx and didn't get there. They lost it. Oh, I don't want to use them again. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So the model of cognitive response. So, we get exposed, and that provokes three different areas of thinking. First, we think about the product and the message. That's category thought. But then we also think about the source. So we think about FedEx making this commercial, right? So when Coca Cola made that. Uh, offensive commercial, then people thought Coca-Cola, they didn't want to buy it. They didn't like Coca-Cola as much. Now you notice, so the product message thought and the source thought 
that leads you to an, an attitude about the brand. The third category is that I like the ad, and you're just thinking about the ad. I think that was uh, inappropriate, it was appropriate, and that was funny, and this is lighthearted, it was really good. They really did this well. They should have had the actress do this instead of that. Uh, they shouldn't have had a dog in the ad. You're right, so we, we think about the ad. So notice that the thoughts about the product don't impact your attitude toward the ad. But your thoughts about the source and your thoughts about how good the ad was, that impacts your attitude toward the advertisement. Right? And then you'll notice that your attitude about the brand and your attitude about the advertisement drive your purchase decision. Your intention to buy that. So as I'm dieting right now, not that I'm not always dieting, but uh, I have lost 12 pounds and then I gained five back and I lost those five again. So, but that's what happens when I go to visit my mother. You don't tell mom I'm not hungry. So uh, I'm watching television and there's an ad for something to eat. On oh, my email today, there came up an ad for Wendy's breakfast. I love breakfast, but I have not eaten Wendy's breakfast. I've wanted to, but I haven't eaten Wendy's breakfast. I don't eat breakfast or I have a banana. How thrilling is that? I want to go to Wendy's. I saved the coupon that I got in my email, even though I know I can't go because I really I want to go. And I thought, well, maybe I could go buy it and cut it into four sections and eat it over four days. Intention. So the ad brought a thinking response. Now I brought positive and negative thinking responses in me, right? Uh, and brought it, brought the feeling response in me, and the balance of that comes out with whether I'm going to go by or not. And we'll see what my character is if I'm strong enough to hold out. We won't take bets. So, the product message thoughts, right? So, one thing that happens when we give a message in an ad, cognitively, People can start arguing with it. Maybe it's, I don't believe that it would do that. So you the flex seal. Uh, I, I don't think that'll, that'll work. I think that's untrue. Duct tape's a lot better. Or that will certainly not work on a pipe. I'm a plumber and I, you know, we argue, which is very disadvantageous to the results of the act. Um, and some people will come up with supportive arguments. Right. We find that in all the political stuff that comes up and things we see on uh, that our friends post. I've got one friend who's a big conspiracy theory, but I mean, she's gone crazy. You know, I guess that happens to people when they get old. Anyway, uh, she hears something, she's going to support it with other things that she's heard. And suddenly this conspiracy theory is true and Democrats are selling children for playthings all over. They got 250,000 kids that they've stashed away for people. Source-oriented thoughts. Do I degrade or do I have supportive bolstering thoughts toward the person who's given the ad? This is where we're gonna have one lecture just on the sensitive nature of the public today, right? how offended people are. And we're gonna have a whole lecture on that because that's, that's such a thing that I never had to worry about. People were more callous back when I was doing most of this. And uh, now they're more sensitive. So how do we look into that? Do I think badly of the company and therefore I want more kids? Did you guys hear about MyPillow? Yeah, the MyPillow guy, the guy who invented MyPillow came out in support of the Capitol riots and Donald Trump. Coles dropped him, Bed Bath and Beyond dropped the pillow, and uh, so did J.C. Penney's, and he's going to be laying people off. He's going to go from three shifts down to one, and they have to close one of his plants because people think of the source, and then they act derogatorily toward it. Then there are execution thoughts. Do I like the ad? Does it make me like the ad? Um, 
we're going to be looking at uh, the ads to the Super Bowl. And the goal of the Super Bowl is to make sure those ads are really, really good. And not only will you guys be analyzing how good they are, but people all over the country analyze the ads to see whether they like them or not. And it's just kind of a favorite pastime. You go to the office the next day and you talk about the ads. I didn't like this one. Did you see that stupid ad on? You said, this was a great ad. Let's watch it. So effective conditioning is where we take the product and place it next to other things that the consumers feel positive about. So in the grocery store, we put complementary products next to one another. So we put steak sauce next to the steak, Pepsi, and free, you know, Pepsi's owned by Frito-Lay. So Frito-Lay came up with the, uh, the uh, Pepsi One challenge for grocery stores. So they went and got a lot of grocery stores to move the Pepsi to the chip aisle. And what they found was an increase in the sale of chips because when people went down to get their Pepsi and they grabbed chips there too, saying these are complimentary purchase. And when the two are on a different aisle, they don't think about one or the other and they sold more Pepsi and they sold more chips by putting them next to each other. Um, so we condition people. So if you're going to do an ad, what comes before your ad? Does it matter? What comes after your ad? So I've got to look and I've got to think, huh, what would, when they read my ad, what did they just read before they saw my ad? Yeah. Same with TV or radio. Is there a way to know that? Like if you're buying an ad service, can you have access to that? Yes, so you'll notice the type of ads. If you ever watch the evening news, they've got ads for medicines on there. Coca-Cola will not advertise on the evening news because people think bad things because they thought bad things happened in the news. And so I make sure that I don't have my ad after people heard, a new, you know, 100,000 people in, in, died in Malaysia. More after this, and you get a Coca-Cola ad. <laughs> and then it comes back and, yes, look at all these people who died here. We got pictures of them. You'll keep it out of Coca-Cola because it's associated. All right, so if on the radio, generally, if you got a shot jock, you don't put your product on there because they can say something that offends a bunch of people and then your ad's on there and people are mad because you support this stuff. Oh. You know, 38 years ago, I had a dream. And now, thanks to AGF Mutual Funds, I'm living it. That dream? To be an actor in retirement commercials. This woman? Not my wife. The grandkids? Not mine. And the dog? Hollywood! <laughs> yes, AGF has helped me achieve my retirement dream. Right, boy? <laughs> Meet your dream. AGF. What are you doing after work? Right, so affection and cognition. I like it. That's funny. That's really good. And then I think, you know, I really do need to put more money into my 401k. Or I really need to establish an IRA. And I remember H.E. Edwards. No. Oh, affection and cognition working in combination. Affection and cognition. This is a really special day. Yeah, it is, Evan. Steven. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Evan what? was my ex-boyfriend. We've, we've been here before. I just... <laughs> affection and cognition right uh you, you know i don't drink nescafe but then it's like oh that was really good and then you think well you know i guess i could try it so let's do this one i'm gonna let me move bethany down here uh actually that doesn't show well enough all right i'm gonna hold on 
uh, share screen. Okay. Can you guys see that well enough? That yes or no? I you're not. I can't hear anything. That, Oops. Uh, it's going to be blurry anyway, but okay, let's. I don't know why this one is. How about that? Close enough? All right, let's do that. Get together in groups of two or three and figure out which one is better and why. What's good about each one? And what's bad about each one? Groups of two or three, you should talk to people and you should be saying, okay, this is good, this is good, this is good, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Each one, go. Come on, move, move, move. One worked and one didn't work. All right, how many like this one the best? Nobody? So how many like this one the best? Everybody, how about that? How about that? Okay, so what is, uh, what's wrong with this one? There's no what? It's empty. Why is it empty? They drank it quick. <laughs> but the, the ice cube isn't even melted. <laughs> I, this was good tea. So what's bad about it? You didn't get it? Or it's not easy. Took you a while to think about it. Maybe too long, maybe not too long, maybe too long. So what else? What else didn't you like? The paragraph below it. Kind of explains what's going on with the picture. Yeah. Sort of blue bland. Like it's gone. It was so good. Did you guys get the empty? Yeah. So got, uh, is that a pun? Yeah. So we got a pun, but does it work? Did anybody not get it? Who didn't get it? The empty. Okay. All right, all right. What else didn't you like? You, nobody liked it. Why? It's not very appealing. Like, well, just from like if you're just staring at it, there's nothing that makes me happy. Like, like the other one actually has things that will like entice you. Like, honestly, like you know, like, doesn't make you peaceful. I think it makes it's kind of a my and my uh, one of my daughter in laws 
she's a counselor and she'd see something like that and she would say, oh, that just makes my eyes happy. She's so sweet, you know? <laughs> Make your eyes. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, she would like that. What else? Yeah. So the subtitle, bet you're going to like it better too? Doesn't make sense. It does say that the person who drank it, I mean, think about it, the person who drank it was their first time trying it. And when, once they tried it, Oh, man, they liked it. Bet you're going to like it, too. Now, some of these things are subtle, of course, and you, maybe you don't even think about them, but you're catching them in the back of your mind. Yeah. Okay, what else? Okay. Which text? Um, I don't know if they taught Okay. Why do you think they didn't build it? Or does it, yeah, so does it, if it was bold, would it detract? Would it draw the attention away from the empty glass that was so good at down before the ice melted? I mean, that's what they were trying to do. Yeah. I want you to the simplicity when you were talking to letter dog, but it's too much in all caps. It's something. But it tell me why. <laughs> so you think the font is bad? It's all in font. If we change the fonts, if we change the texture of the fonts, would it be better? I would say if they came to it. Meaning, how would you treat it differently to make it work? M P T B A is all small to the and that actually might help with the space of the word. Okay, so what if we bolded the E M P? And let the T not be bolded. Or if we bolded the T and not the M. Interesting how maybe just changing the the boldness of a word. Uh, or what's good? What else? Good? What's good about it? They ran it. I think the fact that it's gone and the ice is still there shows that it was good. Okay. What else? I think the fact that the picture of the T and the logo of like what the product is at the bottom, since those are the only two things they tell us, not just that that's where your eyes are. Okay, so we give you the package. Now, one of the things that's very important in, in some products is to show you what the package looks like, not the product. So I go to buy a product and I go through CVS, they don't have it. Well, they did have it, but I was looking for a tube and they had it in a box. And I didn't see the box, I didn't know what the box looked like, so I figured they didn't have it. All right, so a lot of times in advertisers will show you the box so that you know what it looks like, so you know it's box. How many know have ever heard of Tetley tea? Okay, a couple of us. So Tetley is an English tea and it's a very refined tea. Okay, so when if you were in England, uh, I'd like some tech. Uh, I don't know if that's I don't know if that is. It's more expensive tea. How many heard of Lipton? I got to everybody. All right. So, so maybe this is a new introduction to you of a different kind of tea. Would that fit with the context? Bet you're gonna like it too. So this is an introduction. Whereas this is not an introduction to the product. You already know what Lipton is. All right, a little different goal. All right, so what, everybody like this one. What's good about it? Yeah. Uh, I like just the way the black is set up. Okay, so the, um, how do I silly? Images, it demonstrates or it images refreshment. Right? So when you see a Coca Cola commercial, that's a sweating glass. Right? Why is it sweating? Well, it means it's cold and that's it's refreshing. 
Yeah, so it, if I'm trying to say this is going to refresh you, that picture does do it. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, yeah. Um, well, I thought they put the in the condensation, like the logo inside of the No matter where you look on the ad, you can see that. So the repetition of the product name. Guess what we got? They also show the Okay. And they're also saying you can get it out of the bags, out of instance, out of the different kinds. We got different kinds and they all this applies to all of them. What else? Yes. Um, the lettering where like on the glass is white, so it pops out. Okay. The so the text colors. So if those were brown letters, that would not work. They'd be lost in the color of the tape. Yeah, good. What else? Well, I got a picture of the whole thing. What do we call that? Well, there was a word last time. Giantism, yes. Yeah, giantism. Good. So. I just gave you a lecture on affection and cognition, and nobody thinks maybe this has something to do with affection and cognition. Oh. So, when you choose what you're going to drink, is that a cognitive? Decision or an affected decision? That's an affected decision, right? Coke versus Pepsi. What? Well, I'm gonna drink Coke. What? I'm a Coke. You, you know, that's that's an emotional decision. There's emotion behind that. And, you know, we, we don't have Coke. We have Pepsi. Give me water. <laughs> I'm insulted that you don't have Coke. That's an emotional decision, right? So the choice of tea, is that a cognitive or is that an emotional decision? So if you need a, it's an effective, um, the, the decision comes from affection, not from cognition. So our Tetley tea ad here, is it an effective ad or is it a cognitive ad? In T, who did, did anybody not get that? You read, okay, yeah, right, that's cognition. I gotta think empty. I've never heard, what is that word? Oh, empty, empty, yeah, okay, right? So, you notice the, it's cognition, right? So, bet you're gonna like it too, better too, cognition. Right? Oh, somebody else liked it. I like it too. I like it also. Um, it's gone. It's so good. It's clear, Chris. The flavor comes uh, from those teeny little leaves. That's definitely Tetley. And why it's why so many folks are switching to Tetley tea. Switching? Notice there's a theme here. Uh, fill it up, drink it down, fill it up, drink it down. They're trying to get you to project yourself. Drinking Tetley tea instead of the tea you normally drink. We're trying to get you to switch. They're trying cognition to get you to make an effective decision. So this one really blew it. Bad remembrance, bad um, uh, persuasion. This one, this is an effective picture. It brings you in. So looking like something like, yeah, I'd like that. In fact, I'd like one right now. I'm thirsty. That it, it's, it's affection. It's not, oh, well, let's think about which tea is the best. But no, it's dead. Look, it, it's time to drink some tea. Yeah. Okay, so let me give you some principles. I better switch back over here.
Okay, move back over here, Bethany. Uh, principles. The appeal of an ad is we go on that sheet for that I gave you for our principles, right? The appeal for an ad needs to flow to the decision of the customer. So if it's an effective, it needs to go effective. If it's cognitive, it needs to go cognitive. The, the ad needs to match what we want to happen. Okay. So, sub point. An effective appeal calls for a tantalizing visual making immediate emotional impact. So an effective appeal calls for an ad that makes a tantalizing visual with immediate emotional impact. An effective appeal calls for a tantalizing visual that, call, that, that drives an immediate emotional impact. This is a effective decision that I want an effective ad. And so a tantalizing visual or something that's going to give me an emotion, immediate emotional impact, okay? A cognitive appeal calls for a more thought provoking or cerebral I put it message. That's probably the best way to put it. I have text down here. A cognitive appeal calls for a more cerebral or a thinking concrete message. So if we're talking about whether I'm deciding between Toyota or the Honda, now for me, that's not gonna be an emotional appeal. Which one's better? Especially which one's better this year? Because they're both worth about the same. And sometimes you drive down the street, you don't even know whether that's Toyota or, or a Honda. And <laughs> their shape is the same, right? Some one does it first, it, it sells, so the other mom, you know, does a mock-up and doesn't just like it, right? So what's the question for me? It's which one has better miles per gallon? Which one's going to resell better? Wait. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's do this one. I'm going to move you over. All right, get together in your groups. Got two ads here for mascara. I tell you, I have learned a lot about mascara since I came to teach at AU. I had uh, one student group once, I had two student groups who did principles projects on mascara. Boy, did I learn a lot. <laughs> okay, so which one of these two is better? What's good about each one? What's bad about each one? Get together your groups again and talk about it. And remember your, uh, your things for participation come out of your discussing this stuff. So you shy people be bold. Go.
And I, I feel like I should explain. I'm just a little paranoid about this. If you see me stretching my legs and things like that. Uh, last summer, I was saving money. I fell off a ladder and fell on my hip. So I got two, two muscles and tendons over in my butt that are killing me. And uh, I've got a bulging disc and a pinched nerve. So just forgive me if I move and it's kind of strange. And if I, and I sit down, that's because that's I'm, I'm hurting. So just don't worry about it. Um, now, which are which of these is a right-handed ad, and which is a left-handed ad? What do you mean a right-handed ad? You mean you're going to hold it up with your right hand? Now you're turning the page of the magazine. Do you want it on the left-hand side, or do you want it on the right-hand side? And yes, it matters. Yeah. The left is a is a right-handed, and the right is a left-handed. So where are the staples? You want the staples over here, and you want the staples over here. Why? Because when you're opening the ad, you may not fold it all the way out, so you may not see something over here. So if there's something I want to miss, I want it to be in the fold. Yeah, is that really important? Oh, you bet it is. If I'm gonna miss something on this ad, if I cut off a little pedal over here, uh, and if I cut off that, um, uh, create a flutter new uh, long arm lash lily, I want, I want, you know, I want you to, I'm gonna, I've got some space over here. That's why this is not over here. Yeah, there now, so, if I'm doing a web page and I put an ad on a web page, where do I want it to be? You want it on the right hand side, the left hand side, in the center, at the top, at the bottom? Does it matter? Oh, yes, it does. And different has made different mean different things. And so you have to think through where is this going to be placed, just like the ad coming after a shot talk on the radio. It matters. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, let's do, uh, how many like this one better? One, come on, let me see. Two, two. How many like this one better? Hey, oh boy, a lot of people like this one better. Interesting, all right, so let's, uh, let's do this one first. What'd you like about this, baby? Which is the product in use? Or after having been used. Yeah, I remember, <laughs> I remember like in the last class you were saying we connect with faces. So right. what it's trying to do is want the viewer to put themselves in her shoes. Yeah, and she's got long lashes. Long lashes. Uh, anybody else got good long lashes like that? I did, <laughs> which is really a problem when you wear glasses. So but sometimes it gets you get too personal. I have to cut my lashes. <laughs> Not every week and a half. Now be glad of that because if, if I was fluttering my eyelashes like this over here, of course, you really can't see the thing from a distance unless you, that's why you use the mascara, all right, to make it brilliant. That lady's got big eyelashes. My son has, uh, one of my sons has eyelashes like that. I'm like, man, you know, there, you know, eyelashes come up to here, it's like your eyebrows. It's time to trip the things. <laughs> Okay, too personal. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so clearly she's got them. These are not, I mean, they look like fake eyelashes. They're not. If this stuff doesn't. And if you're one of those who likes really big eyelashes, I've had a couple ladies in class who did. And, you know, you could just see when, as soon as they saw it, it was like, oh, yeah, I'd buy that. Okay, what else is good? Everything is good. Everything not only your eyelashes, but the verbiage, like the like, fire and the flower, everything is like continuing. Okay. So what's this down here? It's what part of a dress? 
That's why I thought, no, those are upside down eyelashes. <laughs> oh, yeah, and we have the limitless link flashless curl, right? In, in designed as the eyelash. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what else? Oh, I don't know that it is, but okay. In fact, I think they carry this stuff just in you know, a little whack and they just set it in there, and that is the package, I think. But I could be wrong. Either way, anybody use Lancome? Okay. Oh, it's in a box. It is in a box? Oh, okay. I'm learning even more. What else? Yes. Um, it has the company at the top and then at the bottom. So where you can buy it. Is what company makes it important? It certainly is if you're if you buy Lancome. Who buys Lancome? Rich working women, executive type women, land comes. So where do they shop? Pennies? Not on your life. So we put Bloomingdale's in there. We get Bloomingdale's to pay us to put their name in there. So they pay for part of the ad. That's a co-op ad. And um, we direct people where to go is Bloomingdale's because that's where you get the stuff. If you're a rich executive type woman or you're going to be one, this is the kind of stuff you use. Oh, all right. What else? What's bad about it? Kind of busy. Busy. How do you mean it's busy? There's just a lot going on. But generally speaking, at least what I've seen today, a lot more ads are a lot more simple. And it's like hard to know what you're supposed to do. What's this? That's the entire point of the ad. That is the mascara looking at it this way instead of this way. So it's got three sides of bristles. So you spin it and as you spin it, it hits a new side and it helps create the curl versus this one over here where you roll it and guys just see so you know you have to roll it. Um, I learned that. So you can't just go, you know, you have to roll it, right? So this with the try thing, you roll it and it's set up and you get more as you roll. So you use the stuff that's on this bristle and then you move to another bristle and you're using it to get more stuff. I've said too much. So, but she didn't know how to watch. And what are these? Why do we have a rose in there? I was thinking maybe it was like a famous actress in the movie and just or TV show. Well, she looks like she was in the uh, black and white movie, doesn't she? Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Maybe the fifties. Uh, it's interesting. Why do we have that big black spot under her nose? I dare say a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. And a lot of stuff is not connected, or at least not in my mind. I don't get it. Yeah. Okay. Like what? Yeah. Dramatic. Formula lift, length and lock in curls is our extravagant stuff for limitless length and lavish curls. Okay, that's what we say. You got the the uh, website over. Here. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff going on. This was a very ineffective ad. A very ineffective ad. Had too much going on. Now, this is a new product, clearly, right? New product. So if it's new product, I got to draw you in 
to you using it. I clearly, I think with this, with this, um, my bet is most of you ladies in class would not go for this at all because you don't want less that long. I mean, you want them long, but not that long, not that thick. You, you know, that's, now maybe you do, and I don't mean to insult you, but they're, you know, people have styles. And some ladies, it's like, oh man, that's great. And some ladies, it's that's just a little bit too much, right? Um, so it's a new product I want to get you to use. And there's just a, there's a lot of stuff there. All right, how about this one over here? What's good about it? Now, of course, you're stuck because there is something good about it. <laughs> What's good about this? Okay, it's also a new product. Why do we have the butterfly? Actually, it's a moth. Why do we have the moth? I thought it was showing off the butterfly, like butterfly kisses. So this is the eyelash of these, but it was a moth. So that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Uh, is it its long stem lashes is like ranting on the stem? That, that's certainly a play. <laughs> so the moth is the symbol for Clinton. And the rose is the symbol for Lanco. <laughs> That's why they're there. So as soon as you see the rose, you know it's a Lanco. You don't have to see the word Lanco, you know. As soon as you see the butterfly, you know it's Clinique. Uh, any ladies in here use Clinique? Okay. Did you identify with the you did? So there you go. You know exactly what it is. Um, so we know why you chose this one because you use it. It's got to be better how you use it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it's simple and it, um, it communicates to the current customer. So this is directed to the Clinique user. I got a new mascara for you, you to tell. You see what I'm saying? And this one is for the Lanco person. This is not trying to get a Clinique person to start using Lanco. This is for a Lanco person to start using something else because we've got a special tip for you because we are a special company and you're a special person. Okay. New product for a current customer. Now, does that tell me what magazine I need to put it in? It should because I need to think if I'm trying to get a clinic person to try this product and see this ad, I better put it in the kind of magazines that clinic users will want to be. Because clinic users and the Lancome user, hmm, I could actually put this ad in a magazine for executive women. Because that's my client or for old women, because older women, once they get wealthy, they start using the clinic too. All right, so, so you see a lot of women with blue hair, the blooming nails. <laughs> so uh, what else is good about it? Yes. They're actually advertised on the end of the breast. So the tip, the, the important stuff, is the focal point, right? So the butterfly is at the tip and the tip is what's new and what's different and what's big. And we also use what to show how big it is? We use giantism in here. What else? Okay. Okay, and we know it's for long stem lashes. That's fake. Yeah. And over here, create a flutter. Of course, the campaign that they've been using for two years is create a flutter, and they use butterflies. So that, that's, cons that's consistent with their other ads. Um, new long stem lashes, allergy tested, 100% fragrance free. Again. 
Yeah, I should see you all sprawled out here. Ah! Yeah, that'd be funny. You just have to talk about No, I don't want to. What else? Should they be talking about the non allergen? Yes. Why? Very important. Yes, very important. And the uh, the allergy testing? That's very important to a lot of women, right? And Clinique is known for the way they don't use animals for testing. And, they, you know, it's, you know, that fits right in with who Clinique is. Yeah. So what's bad about it? Well, I should have a big list here because you guys didn't like it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. And if we were trying to get new customers, that would really be big. But given that it's two current customers, it's okay. But, but boy, yes, so we have to think of, okay, who am I trying to get? To? Am I trying to get new users? If I am, I gotta change this. This does not work if, it, if it's for trying to get a new user, right? So I have to understand what I'm trying to do with the ad. Yeah, yes. I don't like that they don't show what the bottom looks like. Okay. I don't know what to look like. Good. Now, I don't buy Clinique. Where do you buy Clinique? Uh, yeah. Where? Uh, okay, Sephora. Uh, okay, is it, can you easily find it? Yeah. Okay. All right, so they, they viewed that, but that's not important. Now, if you bought it in CVS, I think that would be important. You know what I'm saying? You know, you're not, it's just crowded with seven, eight, 15 different types of stuff. Yeah, okay. What else is bad? Yes. Okay, what is the butter? So, new user, right? Not a current person who knows the campaigns, but a new user, it's like, this is not going to work. I'm ready to flip the page. And yes, that is, again, that is really critical here. This is a very bad ad for a new user, right? For a non-clinique user. It's a good ad for a new product for clinique users. You have to know our customer. Yes, yes. What else? It says it's like a long stem but to me, it just looks like a basic mascara wand. It doesn't seem much longer than anything else. And you can't see a formula, so there's nothing about formulas. We really don't know what makes this effective, other than the words. Okay. Does it give? So what do I need to do there? I need to know my customer. What are the deci decision triggers what are the pain points? What are the desires of the customer? And uh, I can do, anybody in the um, market research class this semester? Okay, so you're gonna be doing some covariate analysis on um, market research. So you'll, you'll get data of attributes, what attributes there are and which ones are important. And then you'll use that and you'll, find, and you'll use mathematical formulas and you'll get in there and say, ah, these are the two the, the attributes that are most important to you. And that's why they did their research and that's why we've got this and this. Because those are the attributes that the research said were the most important. You don't do that research and you say, I don't get enough info, you screwed up. Oh, well, I think it looks good. Yeah, but what about the research? Well, I think it looks good. <laughs> and, and we mess up because we didn't know the customer. Cool? Yeah. So this one was very, very effective for Clinique users. A lot of trials, a lot of remembrance. Um, this one was not effective among Lancome users. Okay. Now, I will throw this out at you. This, this could destroy the research on these two ads. I'm not positive that a Lancome type customer would want this kind of product. 
<laughs> I'm not sure there are that many people like that who have lashes like that all the time, except maybe when they're doing cocktail parties and things of that nature, but I could be wrong. So that, but I just think maybe it wasn't as effective because that customer didn't want it anyway. And, and that can always destroy research, yes. So with like rash and isn't it always from ad size? Like when there's white commercials for your teeth, no one's realistically gonna have plastic teeth, but they show plastic teeth. Would you not want the longest lashes possible? Well, technically, but realistically, your lash is so long. Depends on your customer. This would turn my wife off like that. She's not, she, there's no way she would want eyelashes like that. But is it realistic? Like, those look fake. They do look fake. So it's going after a certain type of woman who wears them, right? They golfed. So I, I had a student in here a couple of years ago, and her eyelashes were longer than this. And they were not fake. She loved her lashes. Right? Different, different strokes for different folks. <laughs> So let me go back to review from principles. Very importantly, we've seen a bunch of these four principles of Kennedy come into play. And you remember, hopefully you remember them from principles. Kennedy is the guy who went to the number one advertising company in the uh, country, which was above a bar at the time, and sent a message up, says, you guys don't know anything about advertising? Come talk to me, I'll tell you what it is. And I'll ask her when to talk to Kennedy. And the first thing he said is salesmanship or, or advertising is a salesman in print. So what a salesperson does when they're with you, that's what an ad tries to do. Okay. Second reason why advertising. Now you want to get clear here, consumer, Versus business. B to C is different than B to B. And this is going to be really important for you guys to get because later on when you're doing emails, we do a B to B email and you don't get this and don't implement this into those emails. I got to be wrong. So in, for a consumer, we focus on the benefits. How does it benefit my life? The T. It benefits my life because I get refreshed, right? For a business, we focus on solutions to problems. Businesses have problems and they need to get them solved. So we focus on solutions, pain, the both of these consumers and businesses have pain points. Right? So I know what that pain point is. But for a customer, we solve that by benefit. And for a business, we sell it through a solution and a feature. So you don't really tell consumers features. You tell consumers how the features are going to benefit. But a business, here's some other features that this offers you. Ah, that's added value. And business people put it together because in their frame of reference to apply it to their own business and their own business problems and how it would make their business better. Okay. Right effective copy. So this doesn't necessarily, this doesn't mean spell it correctly. Because in fact, if some places in Kentucky, when you do ads, you want to say, ain't this good? Or uh, I run to the store. Because that's how the people talk. The point is you target it towards your customer that you're trying to reach. So in our last ads, which reminds me, I didn't give you principles. I'm going to pull that back up. So um, write it toward the customer you're trying to reach. Make the message speak to that customer. And finally, test copy. Do not trust yourself. Don't trust yourself. Test it out. All right? Don't be arrogant. Now, that doesn't mean don't believe in yourself, but it does mean believe in yourself that you can analyze the data. <laughs> okay, so let, let's go back to that sheet. Um, I'm sorry, on this one, principles. Let me give you some principles. Okay. Principle number one, 
Am I going to, am I, you need to finish that first? Everybody ready? Okay, good. All right, principle number one, have a simple construct. The construct is an idea. Have a simple construct. So too many elements that are loosely joined together cause confusion. Elements need to be logically connected. Too many elements that are loosely connected causes confusion, whereas elements need to be logically connected. Odd, uh, elements need to be logically connected. Again, this is for that sheet. So we're going to have ads that we'll do in the, that we'll do in the test. And no, you can't bring the sheet in. The, uh, <laughs> all right. Um, explain the benefits. Explain the benefits. That's consumers. They want to know the benefit. And finally... Your images need to stand for something that the customer associates with your product. So the imagery needs to stand for something that the customers associate with your product. So the rose and the, and the uh, moth here help because they're associated with the product, right? So your imagery needs to be associated with the project, with product. Bring you back, Bethany. All right, so let me stop this, share, uh, oops. Hold on. What are we doing on time? Were we out of time? Oh, well, then we'll stop there. I was just going to do something for fun. That's all the content for today. Good luck. You guys have a great day. Make sure you sign the roll. Check the tutor here. Yes. Can I have you repeat the the first um, sub point for the appeal of an ad? Um, first sub point. Yes. So an, that's an effective appeal. Yes, sir. You need a tantalizing visual with an immediate emotional impact. Tantalizing visual with an immediate emotional impact. Hey, welcome. Weren't you on there at one time? Weren't you one time you were in here? I thought I remember that from some for Christmas. I registered for spring, and then something happened. I could not pick the spring. I was like, and they bumped me down to like non traditional students, and so it was all crazy. It was crazy. But anyway, thank you for your time. You're in. You bet. But what was the 22 hour thing? 22 hours? I was, re I had an email that said I was registered for like 22 hours. And so oh, so I don't know what happened. The first time I looked at your transcript, it looked like you were taking, already taking um, 19 hours. So if you get 20, Right. I don't know if I pulled up somebody else's or you. <laughs> when I counted, okay. when I counted, it looked like you were, so, you were over the limit. So I sent to make sure you get in. Okay. And then he he answered back said, "No, you she's only got 13. <laughs> I was like, okay. "Oh, so I screwed up." Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. Is this um, would you put your name on the bottom? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, who gave who did the ad like the brand itself usually it's the company we're okay. thinking of the company uh sometimes 
like if you know it's a Steven Spielberg act, it's like, oh, I know this is going to be a good act. Mm -hmm. So the source tells me it's going to be great. Oh, the source itself, not the medium. Yes. I thought it was like the medium was the source, like whether it's Steven Well, now sometimes that sometimes yeah, source can include that also. Yes, it can. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, I tend to think in general that if we're using a media, we like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But that's not always true. Sometimes I'm in a bad mood because I'm listening to radio because I don't want to listen to radio, but I am anyway. Okay. And the other yeah. question was when it comes to attraction versus promotion, the determining factor is it more reliant on the product or the customer, or does it have to be a combination of the It's a combination of both. Yeah. But clearly, you want to meet the customer where their need point is. Got it. Some, so, and, and the stage is where they are. Like sometimes, uh, cognitively, I'm there. Mm -hmm. So I've decided I'm going to get a Toyota or a Honda. Now it's now it's what do I want? Okay. Are there any ways to make your graphics in these? Because I am not good at that. I'm uh, trying to go down it's a little better. So start looking at the commercials and start thinking about it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. I've done every magazine. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, TV commercials is the same thing. You know, every everything's got got. You say, okay, that's they're trying. That's. Directed for this kind of person. That's directed to get them to think this. But they're probably at this stage. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have a good one.